This is my story about how I became a vegetarian in Japan. Between 2001 and 2006, I was living and working in Osaka as an English teacher. I enjoyed the Japanese lifestyle immensely. However, there were a couple of issues that started to bother me over time. Sushi restaurants. Japanese people, at least the Japanese people I worked with, loved going out to sushi restaurants. They loved selecting from all the different types of fish, drinking sake, and generally having a good time. Some restaurants had live fish swimming around in tanks. Customers could choose which fish to use in their upcoming sushi or sashimi. Many restaurants also had an open kitchen, that is, you could see into the kitchen and watch your food being prepared. One evening, I was eating out at a local restaurant with some of the Japanese teachers from my school. They ordered a whole bunch of different types of sushi and sashimi, and a couple of the dishes involved the live slaughter of a fish. I could see through to the kitchen, and I watched as the chef slammed down his cleaver into the flapping fish. He immediately started slicing it up, and within a minute or so, the wait staff brought out our first fresh dish. The Japanese teachers immediately tucked into the fish, shouting out the mandatory oishi, delicious, and were encouraging me to eat some. However, I could not. For some reason, seeing the live fish being slaughtered and then put onto our table, something just didn't feel right about it all. Hospitalization. That night, I had immense stomach pains. I had eaten some other sashimi, the non-freshly slaughtered variety, and had fallen ill. It became so bad that I had to go to the local hospital's emergency department. I ended up passing out on the floor and stayed there the night. It was the most sick I have ever been. It turned out that about half the other teachers were also violently ill. The vice principal soon filed a complaint with the local authorities regarding that particular sushi restaurant. Although the fish incident had an effect on me, I still, I still continued to eat meat. There was something different about seeing a fish slaughtered compared to eating a pre-prepared sushi roll from the convenience store. I knew it wasn't logical, but I chose to ignore that part of my brain. To be or not to be a vegetarian. A few weeks went past and winter was fast approaching. Every time I walked past sushi restaurants, I could see the live fish in the tanks swimming back and forth or around in circles. It's funny, they all seem to have a frown on their face. I had seen thousands of fish before, but only now they all seemed to be upset. I continued walking and noticed people selling dogs on the footpath. The poor dogs were locked up in tiny cages, without blankets, just standing on the cold concrete. I thought, how can people treat animals so horribly? It was then I realised that every day, by eating meat, I am also responsible for treating animals horribly. Between 2003 and 2006, there was a lot of coverage of BSE mad cow disease, entering the Japanese meat markets, mainly from the USA, I believe. A couple of people were suspected of contracting the human variety, CJD, it's Kruschfeld jacob disease, and died, I think, in 2006. The Japanese government halted all beef imports from America. Around that time, I was still eating meat, and I ended up going to a Yoshinoya beef restaurant with my girlfriend. They had lost a lot of customers from the BSE scare, so I was a little bit wary about eating there. Despite this, I think I had the gyudon, which is a beef bowl, which they promised contained only Australian beef. That night, I was walking up the stairs to my apartment where I suddenly collapsed. My back had seized up and I had an immense pain up and down the back of my body. I could not walk, could barely crawl. I lay down for about two hours, helpless. My phone had fallen out of my pocket and fallen down the stairs. I managed to crawl up the stairs, open my door and crawl inside. I used the house phone to call my girlfriend and she came around and sat by my side. My immediate thought was that I had contracted CJD, which I knew was highly unlikely, but in my crippled state I could think of nothing else it could be. I decided to rest out the night and if I was still in agony the next day I would go to the hospital. Throughout the night, I was thinking about all the animals that I had seen being treated poorly throughout my travels in Japan. I realised that I had to give up meat. I felt that all those chickens, cows, pigs, fish, etc. were getting their revenge on me, so I decided that night to quit. I still had a few pork dumplings in my freezer, so in the interest of not wasting food, I made a promise that I would finish them off and give, give up meat entirely. Bye bye meat. The next day, my back had gotten better and I was up and mobile again. 
I informed my girlfriend about my decision to become a vegetarian, and she wasn't very impressed. That was my last year in Japan, as I found it too hard to be a vegetarian there. Although I now know, having been a vegetarian for 10 years, I could easily live there now. I never go around trying to convince others to convert to vegetarianism, however, some people mistakenly think I am. I've been attacked, verbally, quite often for my decision, but now have made peace with it. Yes, occasionally I encounter the fanatic meat eater who tries to convince me to start up eating meat again, but I now know that that has nothing to do with me, but instead some repressed issue within themselves. I guess it's similar to the closet homosexual who goes around atta attacking gay people. So that's my story. It's actually very simple to be a vegetarian, and I find it very healthful. I know some people will say, I can't possibly live without meat, but I'm pretty sure they can. I think I used to go around saying the same thing too. It's actually pretty easy, and you end up learning a lot of new ways to prepare food. I also live a much more health-focused lifestyle. If you need any advice with vegetarianism, please feel free to contact me. I'm always happy to help.